questo obiettivo. Quello che voglio dirvi oggi eh, è discutere del problema più urgente che ci troviamo di fronte a livello sociale nelle città. Come possia, possono persone differenti vivere nello stesso posto insieme? È un problema dal punto di vista teorico sollevato da, già da Immanuel Kant in una sua famosa dichiarazione che afferma che è impossibile raddrizzare il tem timbro distorto dell'umanità, ma questo significa che è impossibile trovare con metodi, mezzi verbali, insomma con una discussione, è impossibile trovare, arrivare ad una tolleranza reciproca e arrivare ad una sorta di inter interpretazione comune che sia in grado di appianare le differenze, le discordie. Almeno questo ha detto Kant eh, a suo tempo. E io mi chiedo se questo concetto, ovvero che le differenze, le discordie tra gli umani non possono essere appianate, mi chiedo se questo abbia a che fare anche con la pianificazione, cioè se la città eh, come luogo di coabitazione e di convivenza dell'uomo sia una impresa irraggiungibile. Quello che abbiamo visto questa mattina rappresenta una risposta a questo interrogativo. Eh, dobbiamo parlare in questo caso dell'argomento della buona strada. L'unico modo di consentire alle persone diverse di vivere insieme è di separarle. Nelle scienze sociali è stata avanzata questa argomentazione. Varie persone lo hanno detto e hanno sostenuto che la città dovrebbe essere in realtà costituita da una serie di frammenti di differenze in cui i diversi sono dei gruppi che non hanno intersezioni perché nulla può essere raddrizzato, corretto mettendoli insieme quello che John ci ha mostrato è proprio una risposta a questo tipo di domanda la risposta è lunga peraltro a mio avviso una città aperta è un concetto che significa che cosa? significa che le persone sono esposte l'una alle altre quindi i ponti, le, stra le strade sono adattate l'una all'altra in modo che le persone però così diverse non abbiano la necessità di eh, confrontarsi ver verbalmente. La, la città ha una presenza fisica, una convivenza fisica con gli altri, dove costoro vivono bene anche se non devono mitigare le loro differenze. Voglio sottolineare che questa non è una soluzione, non ci sono soluzioni. Questa è la, fa è la fantasia di un urbanista che per ogni problema ci sia una soluzione. Se c'è una soluzione vuol dire che il problema ma non c'è, no? Ma io non la penso così. Secondo me l'essenza dell'approccio fondato sulla città aperta è questo. Ci sono modi di affrontare i problemi che il problema lo lasciano lì, lo es esiste ancora, insomma. Ma il pubblico è impegnato in un tentativo, il tentativo di riconoscere che ci sono delle difficoltà, ci sono delle differenze, ma almeno possiamo fare qualche cosa di fisico. Secondo me ci sono tre modi di prendere in considerazione questo problema, di cercare di affrontarlo attraverso la pianificazione può essere affrontato creando dei bordi o degli spigoli porosi, i bordi porosi, gli spigoli porosi. Questa immagine trasmette un concetto, l'uso che noi facciamo del traffico all'interno delle città e della mobilità in senso più generale nelle città è questo creiamo dei confini impermeabili non c'è in termini di condizioni fisiche uno scambio possibile 
of uh, open city design is to try, instead of looking at boundaries, look at ways of making porous borders between uh, differing communities physically, uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, ethnically as well as class borders, at which the edges become places of physical uh, uh, presence, co-presence, and even physical exchange. The great, uh, in, the, in planning in New York in, uh, in the 90s, we had this always when we looked at the very sharp boundaries between uh, uh, racial communities in uh, New York City. What could we do to promote integration? And we learned that that word integration was the wrong way to do this. We should be, have been instead thinking about where are the edges of these racially segregated communities, which are also ethnically segregated. We could have where we could locate physical resources like schools or health clinics that uh, obliged people to, uh, to be in the same space with those who differed. Uh, a second principle of open planning, open city planning, that addresses the Kant problem is uh, the issue of synchronous space, which is a very fancy way of saying uh, that mixed uses do not necessarily mixed, mix people. If you have a city which during the day is all about people going to work and then at night there's a transition where it's all about partying and drinking, all those other good things that we should be doing now, and that the one function succeeds another, you do not have, in my view, the kind of mixture that allows people to gradually feel that they are comfortable or able to manage difference. They have to happen at the same time. Again, I refer to what we did in New York. We tried to put, um, for instance, uh, in the late 80s and 90s, we tried to put AIDS clinics in the midst of shopping centers. So while you're shopping, you're, you're seeing people who are ill. You're in their midst. And that is a, uh, a procedure that is, has continued in New York by putting old age homes in shopping districts and conversely putting into public housing lots of non-residential activities which happen at the same time and bring very different kinds of people together. The third and probably the most complicated way of open city design, which addresses Kant's problem, is incomplete um, building. You have a great example of, uh, I'll finish. You have a great example here of the, in the Aravena, uh, of physically how uh, to do this, in the Aravena projects which build half a good house and people complete the other. Um, extended um, more largely, incomplete design involves the kinds of, of experience of territories which feel under-planned and which people colonize because their uses have not been uh, fixed. That might seem to belong to the non-planned city, as uh, uh, Juan Close was talking about. In my view, it takes planning to leave something incomplete. That is, it takes a master plan, rather than any kind of spontaneous local activity, to make a city incomplete, where people can colonize places where they don't belong, uh, or use them for uses that aren't uh, initially uh, evident. Uh, you can't rely on localities for incompleteness. So these are the three 
principles of open city planning that address Kant's problem. Uh, that they are uh, porous borders rather than boundaries, that there are mixed uses which are synchronous rather than sequential, and when there's incompleteness that is made by design rather than trusting to uh, spontaneous uh, local activity alone. And if those three principles were followed, we could erase this image. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, Jean-Louis. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Richard. Oh, uh, of course, uh, I cannot answer uh, the question, uh, but uh, some, I can put some ideas on the, on the table uh, in order to, <coughs> to, to have a, a discussion, a conversation about uh, what is uh, the main subject of your uh, uh, speech, which is uh, urban planning uh, uh, can do something to the physical organization of the city, but uh, people are, are not uh, things, they are not objects. They, <coughs> they can feel, uh, they can accept, they can refuse, and uh, of course, uh, when they have uh, a, a lot of very important differences in opinions, in religion, uh, in beliefs, uh, uh, they can disagree uh, to uh, the living together. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I want to, st to stress one point which is important in the, in the theory of, uh, of opinion. Uh, extremization and radicalization of opinions and beliefs occur when people are not confronted to adverse opinion. And uh, I think it's very important nowadays because this is the main problem we have to manage uh, in a city like Paris or, or a city like uh, London. Uh, the Ring Road, the, the the, 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 the highway we have seen uh, in, in, in the map, the ring road is not only a, a physical frontier, uh, it's also a social frontier. Uh, and of course, the question of integration is very complex, uh, but in a global city, confrontation of opinion, uh, beliefs and values uh, is absolutely uh, necessary. Uh, the, the strength of a city uh, is directly related on this kind of confrontations of uh, opinion. And we know that uh, in uh, cities where people are not confronted uh, with different kind of opinions, uh, the radicalization is the result. For example, in France, when you are looking uh, at the vote from, for the extreme right, for the Front National, uh, you see that uh, the, the, the vote is the highest in the cities where you have no immigrants at all. Uh, and it's the lowest in the cities where you have the more important figures of immigrants, like Paris. In Paris, uh, the, the National Front is very weak. And uh, so, uh, but if you ask people, uh, if they agree to be exposed uh, to uh, opposite uh, beliefs or values, the answer is ob obviously no. They don't want to do it. They don't want to do it, uh, and uh, 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 Paul Lazarsfeld has shown it uh, 80 years ago in, uh, in People's Choice about voting, and uh, I think the, 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 the question is not only a question of uh, social networks, uh, internet, and so on. It was exactly the same in the age of television, and it was exactly the same in the age of uh, 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 printing press. It's a question of how difficult it is to be confronted to a vision which is so different of my vision. And uh, of course, everybody in his everyday life uh, is uh, uh, in this uh, uh, situation. So it means that, of course, Urban planning uh, uh, is not enough. 
Urban planning is a, a necessary condition, but it's not a sufficient condition. But why? Because with urban planning, you are opening the frontiers, the physical frontiers. And uh, <clears throat> this is uh, the, the, the main condition to have this social melting pot, social confrontation, which sometimes is very violent, but creates the vivre ensemble, the living together, of a, uh, of, a global, uh, of a global city. And uh, what you need is, first of all, creating these bridges between communities, and after that, seeing what is possible to do in terms of uh, education, in terms of employment, in terms of uh, social relationship between these different communities. But what I think is that if you don't make the first step which is which kind of city you want to design in order to create social mixity, functional mixity, and circulation of people, uh, fluidity between uh, different places, uh, you cannot uh, do the next steps. And uh, another very interesting figure is that uh, the places where, uh, for example, in Paris, uh, the uh, radicalization of population is uh, highest, at the highest level, is the places where you have no public transportation. Because people feel that they cannot get out of their ghetto. Right. They cannot get out of their uh, 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 territory. So if I am in a territory and I am closed in this territory, it's like a jail. So I act like a prisoner. So I think that Urban planning is not the answer, and uh, as a sociologist, I understand that you, you, you say that, but uh, it's part of the answer, and I think it's very important. Thank you.